And the problem with young black boys and hood movies. Now, there's a lot of issues I know with young black boys and hood movies, feel what I'm saying? Like, specifically teenage boys, feel me? Everybody's a crash out. Either they trying to be a crash out so bad, or they literally just is. It's in their DNA. Straight up. We see this in Menace to Society with Old Dog. We see this in Juice with Bishop. We see this with boys in the hood with the dude that shot Ricky. And we see this shit with Doughboy. And this could be for a whole bunch of different reasons. For example, racism. Growing up without a father. Having no guidance. Having no clear path on what they want to do in life. For me, police. Drugs. Violence. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many causes of why these young black men turn out to be just straight crash outs and like a product of their environment. Now wait, hold up. What is a crash out? A crash out is somebody that makes choices or actions knowing damn well the outcome of their choices won't be nice at all but they still go ahead and do whatever it is that the action is because they don't give a damn about the consequences that come with it. For me, they're not worried about jail time, they're not worried about death. For me, they're not worried about retaliation, none like that. They just straight up don't care, they don't give a damn, they don't give a shit and if they have to do it all over again, they still pick the same actions. You feel me? Because they don't care about the consequences, they're not worried, they're prepared for the worst and they're going to take whatever the risk is, they don't give a damn. Straight up. And a perfect example that's shown in is a menace to society with old dog. Imagine going to the liquor store one night with your friends, thinking shit sweet, peaches and roses and all, shit, flowers and shit. Feel me, nothing to worry about type shit. Just go to the liquor store, grab a few drinks, turn up with your friends, feel me, have a good night type shit, and just be chilling. No, not knowing the whole time when you come out that liquor store, you about to have two bodies, you about to be on the run the whole time. I know it's crazy because all this started just because somebody said one little thing about your mother. Like that all could have been avoided, like what? But no, instead of ignoring the insult or saying something about dude's mother back or, 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 or just telling him to shut up or just ignoring it or walking away or doing something, being a bigger man, no, bro decided to catch two bodies that night. Perfect. So old dog in the street, feel me? Walking to the liquor stores, thinking shit sweet, peas and roses that night, feel me? Nothing to worry about in the world, you feel me? But hey, they start messing around, you feel me? And they got the two Chinese store owners in the back panicking the whole time, you feel me? They got two what look like delinquent young black men in a store making noise, being delinquent, or whatever the case is, you feel me? And they don't like that. They want them to hurry up and get out. And they make that known. But old dog ain't really liking the tone of the store. Now let's not forget, he's a crash out. So he takes however long he wants to take to buy what he came to the store for, you feel me? He gives him a little attitude, roughs him up a bit, and this is where things go to shit. So after old dog took a sweet time to get whatever it is that he came to the store to get, you feel me? He decides that it's time to wrap it up and pay for his shit and keep it pushing. And then for whatever reason, the store owner decides to make a comment. And he says, I feel sorry for your mother. Now, I don't know. Why, why would you make, why would you say something like that? You you feel me? You, you, know, you know his type of people. You feel me? You, you know his appearance. You're looking him up and down. You, you could tell he's not going to let that slide. I don't know what came over his mind and made him say some crazy ass shit like that. You feel me? But bro, me personally, I would've just slapped the shit out of him. Like, don't ever speak on my moms, bro. I don't care who you think you is, bro. Don't ever do that shit, bro. You really gonna get hurt, you feel me? But I was young as hell when I watched this shit. I was like 12. And even at that young age, I knew this store owner done messed up. And it really hurt because bro was so close to leaving the store. Bro was this close to walking out. And you just had to say some shit. And even on Old Dogs Part 2, like, dog, you was so close to walking out the store. Just go ahead, bro. Oh my. Ah, bro. Like, that shit should have never happened, bro. So after that comment was made, Old Dog was like, what you say about my moms? And he walks back to the counter. You feel me? I, I could tell. I could tell shit was about to go down. Now the store owner trying to talk about some. oh, I don't want problems. Nah, shut that shit up. After you just made that comment, after he was just walking out. And then after the store owner's failed attempts of pleading don't work, Old Dog decides to catch him a body. And as if that wasn't enough, he decides to generally murk the woman store owner too, take the security cam footage, and, as if that wasn't enough, he decides to go back to the crime scene of the man's dead body, and rob him, take his change, and do a whole bunch of crazy ass disrespectful shit, bro, like, no crap, like, bro, this guy can't be stopped, bro, he don't give a damn. He not thinking about fingerprints, he not thinking about what if the cops randomly just show up, because you know they be doing that sometimes. You, he not thinking about witnesses, he not think, he don't give a damn, he just straight up hit a lick on him after he just boomed both the store owners like at that point he couldn't be stopped no one could tell him shit straight up and that's how a night of going out to grab a few drinks with the homies just chill out and shit just have a good time turn into two bodies and flee in the scene now like i already stated there's so many reasons why an individual could turn into a crash out no father racism you feel me a whole bunch of other shit combined that just makes one a product of the environment. It's, it's just, it's straight just like that, you feel me? When you in an environment that just says 
no to your well-being and your existence and you trying to go forward and succeed and elevate and shit and you just surround by constant negativity and a whole bunch of bullshit going on it's gonna mold you into into this mean crazy no thinking brain lacking pants sagging you feel me crazy ass crash out individual and that's not me excusing any type of behavior that you feel me young black boys in the hood is putting up but it's it's definitely it's, their environment definitely plays a big role and another character we see this shit with is with bishop and juice now for him the problem is with his father and menace to society we didn't hear shit about old dog's father you feel me so it's pretty clear he grew up without no male role models which is really bad for a young man being raised and brought up in a black community and boys in the hood we don't hear shit about nobody's father the only person that we hear a little bit about their father is Trey, but that's when he was growing up and he was a little jet, you feel me? But when he grew up, we didn't hear shit from him, he just disappeared, went to get the milk type shit, you feel me? He disappeared on some moonwalking Michael Jackson, hat and a rabbit disappearing ass type of shit, you feel me? And Juice is clear Bishop's dad don't play much of a role in his life. He went to prison for an unknown amount of time, you feel me? That could have been years, decades, even days, or even hours, you know what I'm saying? But something really crazy happened to him. Something like so crazy type shit happened. To the point where, to this day, it still traumatizes him. And Bishop sees that. You feel me? So this is a young black man in the hood without a role model in his life. Because he's too traumatized from whatever it is that happened to him in jail. To even get up, be a man, and be active in his son's life. Now a problem that relates to this movie and to all the other movies that I just mentioned, and many more, is these young bulls just want them to look tough and have respect. But long story short, Bishop watches this movie, this film, you feel me, of somebody like stand on straight business, like overthrowing the authorities and shit, like not giving a damn, doing whatever he wants to, and being some tough, big guy, like macho man, like you feel me? And that motivated him to be like, yo, I wanna be like him, I wanna be my own boss, do what I want to, no one can tell me shit, and I can roll how I want. And then, as if that wasn't enough, he heard that one of his old friends just went out in a shootout with the police. Cause he did a little robbery and didn't give a damn and just went crazy and shit, you feel me? And he, 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 he died shooting out the police, which is really dumb. But Bishop looked at it like, nah, my friend stood on straight business. He just upped the corner store, didn't give a damn what nobody had to say, didn't care about the police, took whatever he wanted, and he went out like a G, like a thug, you feel me? And Bishop is convinced that doing shit like that will get you respect and will have you fear. Which is really dumb. So he comes up with this bozo ass plan to rob a corner store. So long story short, him and his boys, they hit a lick on this corner store late one night. And that shit goes south, bro. Long story short, after they just hit the lick on the corner store, they was about to get going after they just robbed the whole place and looted up. But for whatever reason, Bishop has the gun to the store owner's head while his back is turned and is contemplating on if he should pull the trigger or not. The whole time, the goal is to just get some money from the liquor store, do a robbery, look tough, whatever the case is, and just go. No, no. Of course, he has to be black. He has to be black. He has to embrace that stereotype. So what does he do? Boom. Like, for what? You could have got going, bro. What was that for? No, you were supposed to leave no evidence. You feel me? No face, no case type shit. But, but bro, you just, you, you, bro, you just, you, you, you. He just complicated things a whole lot more for no reason, bro. That shit was not necessary. Over what, respect? Dog, you still would've gotten respect if you just took whatever you had and just ran out. Like, no, like nobody would be messing with y'all. Like, no like, nobody would care, bro. No one would even know. Like, there was literally no difference made with the shooting or without the shooting. Like, it, the shooting made no difference to whatever they already had going on. So what was the point of that, bro? Just some young, dumb crash out shit. That's what I'm saying. These young black men like to crash out for no reason. And that's what brings me back to the racism aspect of it. You got a bunch of young black men raised in the hood in a cycle of guns, violence, drugs, you feel me, a whole bunch of bullshit going on in the hood, and then they go out into other places, you feel me, they go out in public, and they interact with others, and they wonder why others fear them so much. They ain't polite, they, like, they don't care, they don't got manners, nothing like that, and they still somehow sit there and wonder, hmm, why am I being treated like this? Why am I being treated like this? Why, why are they looking at me that way? Bro, look at you, bro, take a look in the mirror, look at your appearance, look at your demeanor, look at your tone. You feel me? But even if, even if you want to be all raggedy and like, even if you want to be me mugging, that's fine. But at least like know the situations and when to do shit and when not to do certain shit. Like, it's all about them not knowing like they got, like they got no filters, no chill, no nothing. They always 
ready to crash out. That's where police brutality comes in. Even the even the damn police don't want to save them. Bro, whenever the cops get a call to the hood, look how the cops act. We saw this shit in Boys in the Hood. When the police got called, the police he was a damn off he was a damn black officer and look how he was acting. He was he was on some weird shit. He don't even like his own kind. So when you got black folks hitting their own damn race and every other race on top of that hitting the black race, what does that teach the young black men in the hood? That teaches them self-hatred. That teaches them to hate each other. That teaches them to not like th themselves. You feel me? And that adds on to the bullshit and the crashing out and the and the and the self-hatred and the negative mentality of of it just being a ratchet black, young black man. That's all. That's all. It, it just it just adds fire to the flame, bro. It doesn't help with shit. And then on top of that, the drugs. Look at what the drugs is doing. Everybody's a fiend, bro. Everybody's a straight up addict, bro. It's either they 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 they, they doing it anything for a little dope they doing anything for a little weed or like they just they straight up just crashing out over the drugs bro you feel me like it's either like it's bro money over drugs you feel me they, they having issues over money with drugs they having turf wars over drugs a whole bunch of bullshit over the drugs you feel me and when bro once once you get on that stuff it's hard to get off you feel me even the moms even the moms be crackheads be on heroin you feel me crack addicts and shit and they be raising up their kids ratchetly and the wrong complete way because they they just they on drugs all the time they high shit all the time so they just they raising their kids anyhow and they re raising the kids to be whatever it is that's around them drugs money not good money by the way violence and a whole bunch of bullshit and then they be raising their kids to be these drug chasing felon addict chasing heroin crack addict chasing young black men bro and that shit is sad to see and it's crazy because they'll really do anything spend their last and crash out over just a little bit of drugs bro for what and this is by far the worst example of crashing out that i'm about to mention right here i can't remember the exact reason off the top of my head but for some reason kane and his boy odog put up to a sucker's house they started being him and his homies they just started being the shit out of them bro like they beat the bricks off of them like they gave them work for real like they beat the bricks off of them like no cap like they gave them the beats that day like Beat the straight daylights out of them. Like, no kizzy, bro. Like, this is no lie, bro. But I'm pretty sure it had to do with a girl. If not, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it had to do with a girl. Which is not worth it at all, bro. If I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. Like, whatever the problem was, it really wasn't even that serious. Like, it could have been just handled, handled differently, talked about, you feel me, or just completely ignored. But no, they decided to go and beat the bricks off of them, bro. And guess what? They later paid for that. So later in the movie, you feel me, it was towards the end and type shit. And... Kane and his boy old dog and shit like they were thinking shit sweet you feel me having a nice fun day and shit just, just, just outside chilling and shit thinking shit was cool you feel me nice summer day and shit gonna have a great time that was that that was sadly interrupted <laughs> that was sadly interrupted so the dude they just jumped they pulled up they sticked up masked down and shit and they drove by they hopped in the v they hopped in that little whip they hopped in the V, you feel me? Hoodie on, mask on, strapped on, try to run here and get that far type shit, you feel me? And they cut them corners, they found they block, and they pulled up. Y'all know what my boy Post Malone said, right? He said, when my homies pull up on your block, they made that thing go, -ta -ta -ta! hell yeah, that's what they did. That's what they did. They said, y'all want to jump us and play with my cousins and my homeboys like that? I bet, y'all going to eat that, like literally. So they put up onto their block and sprayed that shit down like a car wash on some crazy ass shit bro kids was in the way girls was in the way a bunch of young kids young men you feel me they was all in the way and you feel me like bro bullets was flying everywhere bro and the mill ticket was hit the mill ticket was hit and they was literally moving that day they was literally going making it out the hood the same day but no which goes to show you once you went once you want to be a crash out and be on that delinquent bullshit and be on that ignorant you feel me? Black ratchet bullshit is a cycle that never ends and there's no escaping out, bro. Even when you try to leave, it gonna catch up to you, bro, and you gonna eat that, bro. On some real shit. And it's really crazy because Lil' Kids was in the way too, bro. That, bro, somebody's baby could have got hit. Then that would have been more bloodshed after that. That would have been more retaliation after that, you feel me? Bro, that shit was crazy. And it's, bro, it really bothers me and it really makes me laugh because, like, the main crash out wasn't even hit. Old dog survived that shit somehow, you feel me? Ain't nothing happened to him. He wasn't touched. 
but those around him was affected. You feel me? Which goes to show you stop trying to be a crash out and stop hanging with crash outs. You feel me? Because Kane himself was low key starting to turn into a crash out after hanging around Old Dog too much. You feel me? He was, he was on he was on some crazy shit, jumping dudes and shit. Just he he was starting. I could see it in him. He was changing a little bit, and he 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 got the consequence for that. So because of the environment that these young black boys are raised in in these hood movies. They're the product of their environment, and that's the reason for them crashing out. The drugs, the no role models, no fathers, you feel me? The violence, you feel me? The racism, all of this shit adding up, just it just adds fire to the flame. It makes them hate themselves. It makes them do crazy shit to each other. And whether it be the violence, the respect, the juice, whatever it is, you feel what I'm saying? The racism making them hate this, themselves, the self-hatred, whatever it is going on, it all adds up, and it leads crash out or a straight product of their environment which guess nobody 